overcoming anxiety with peace? Well, there's, I, I'm sure that you all know about the opiate crisis in our country and you know about all of the people that are hung up on um, drugs, trying to fill the void in their life because they don't know what to do. Anxiety is the national disease of our culture and our country. But the Bible says that there's a kind of peace that God wants to give us that uh, is so great that unless, you know, unless you've had it, you can't explain it. Mm -hmm. The Bible says it's the peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. That's the peace you get from Jesus. Jesus is our peace. And, uh, you know, there's several kinds of peace in the Bible. There's peace with God. Mm -hmm. That's the peace we get when we become a Christian. Uh, God's hostility toward us because of our sin is taken away. And then there's the peace of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, Philippians 4 and Matthew 6 tell us how to get the peace of God. And uh, in this book, I ask some questions. What are you thinking about? Uh, where, uh, and the questions all are about Philippians chapter 4 that help you deal with the whole process. The Bible says in Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing. Wow. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. So the question is, how are you praying? And, and I remember in, in the book, I talk about some different kinds of prayer that most people don't know. One of them is a kind of a proactive prayer, which is pray about it before you need to pray about it. Mm. You remember what the, the Lord Jesus came to his disciples when they were in the garden. And he said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. In other words, wow. don't wait till you're in temptation. Yeah. Watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation. And I think sometimes when we, when we struggle with bad thoughts or anxiety, we need to start the day out by, by having a little proactive prayer. Yeah. And then the other thing I mentioned in that chapter is what I call progressive prayer. Don't start with your problem. Start with God. Yeah. Right. If you start with your problem, all you will do is exaggerate it and you will come out of your prayer time worse than when you started. Yeah. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation. You see, all that whole prayer is a picture for us of what prayer should be. If we make God big at the beginning, mm. we are aware of the fact that just like that song that we've all come to love at Shadow Mountain, my God is bigger than this. Yeah. Yes. He's bigger than any of the problems we will ever face. Once you get that under your heart, skin in your heart, you know that there's not anything that can come at you that is too big for God to deal with. You know, I think some of, so many of us, when we, when we have a challenge or whether sickness, false accusation, uh, what, whatever comes our way, we have a tendency to just try to play that out in our head. Mm -hmm. What does tomorrow look? Oh God, what does, you know, a month mm -hmm. look like? What does, you know, and so you, that's where, what I do. I sometimes wake up at night and just think, oh God, what, what if, you know, that mm -hmm. happens or, and, and, but God says, do not think even about tomorrow. No, the Bible says sufficient unto the day is the evil of yes. it. And one of the things we talk about in that chapter is learning how to live in day tight compartments. Uh, so, you know, just take it one day at a time. Yeah. If you, if you live in the past, there's not anything you can do to change that. Right. And if you get caught up in the future, you're not there yet. Mm -hmm. So all you're doing is you're, you're expending your energy worrying about something you can't change out of the past or something you don't even know what's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have any energy left to live today. Yeah. So somebody said, if you worry about tomorrow, it's double trouble because you're worried about it now and it's ruined in today. And if it does happen, you've ruined that day too. Mm -hmm. Wow. So learn how to live every day. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen today. And some things happened before that I don't, I can't go back and make it not happen. You know, you can't make something that's happened not happen. It's done. It's in, written in the history book, but you can live every day in peace because God's got control of this day. Yes. You uh, said earlier in this broadcast when we were talking about falsehood with truth that, that Jesus is the truth. Right. Pilate was standing there and said, right. what is truth? And he was looking truth. I am the, the way, the truth, and the life. And, and when you, when you uh, get into this 
uh, anxiety with peace, Jesus declares, I am your peace. That's, that's, that's true. How, how do you take that back? He said that. Yeah. And yes, if he, he said it and he is truth, mm -hmm. then he is your peace. And that's why when you're in anxiety and you're praying, and I don't have to ask you if you are, because right. if you're in anxiety, I know you are, you're crying out to God in some way. Whatever you do when you're there, don't forget to begin your prayer with worship and praise yes. because when you do that, then your heart is filled with the greatness and the power and the glory of God. Then you bring your problem in behind that and all of a sudden you have perspective. No longer it is your problem and your ability, it's your problem and his ability. Thank you, Lord.